All right. So it's another identity intuition you know, we want to learn. But this is the one that uh, if I bring out a proof in, in class right here, then it's going to be like right, right in front of you guys. And it's going to take a lot of time. And it's not practical. And the proof is it's common proof. But you need to uh, so go ahead. Look it up in, in any of your textbooks. Because the standard trigonometry textbooks out there has uh, these proofs. So what we, I'm just, just going to point out what the identity is. Okay, and then when we're going to stick more on the, the practical side of that, how useful it can be for us. Okay. So, the first one I want to introduce you is the sum identity. So we have seen quite a few identities that an identity is, is an, an equation, an equality that's always true regardless of the value for the, the, the variable. So, now we can think about, we can take sine value of the sum of two angles. Let me name that. How about uh, x and y? So x and y in here is two different angles here. Okay. So I'm taking the sine of the sum of two angles. The entity here, the sum entity says we can go sine of x okay, times uh, cosine of y plus sine of y times uh, cosine of x. Purpose here that we want to point out when we're taking sine value of a sum here, it's, we can do the same by doing this work. We're taking sine separately for x, multiply with cosine separately of y, and we add that to sine of y, multiply with sine of with, with cosine of x. Okay. And so that's that's why I call the sum identity. Okay. It's always true. So later on, when we get into the example of showing why I and mean, how it's useful for our calculation work, then we Gonna get there. Okay. But that's why it's called a sub identity. And so same way over here, cosine. When you take cosine of a sub, right? so x and y are get two different angles. Okay. Then we have cosine of x times cosine of y. When it was the sine of a sum right here, then the, the formula says and I call it it's an identity, but it's more like the formula to, to use that when we have when we take the sine value of a sum or a cosine value of a sum right here. So in a previous formula, the sine value of a sum, we end up with in our part of our formula, we end up with two different products and the, the sum here. Yeah, so sum end up with sum. But cosine has something we gotta watch out. We're starting out with cosine of a sum here, and we've got a product, and we're gonna actually subtract, and okay? it goes the opposite way a little bit. And then we've got sine x times uh, sine of y. Okay. So that's those two are the sum and that's sine of a sum and cosine of a sum. Okay. And then after we broke down the four, I'm going to reorganize these identities so in, in a little bit of an easier way to recognize for you guys. Okay. And then we're going to drive you through some examples. Okay. So on the other hand, the, the difference identity here. So the plan is how do we find sine of a difference between some two angles, say x minus y. So now we have a formula as well. So these identities here, I'd rather advise that you guys see these as for now at our level here, formulas that allows us to do calculation on sine of a sum or sine of a difference and cosine of a sum and here about getting into cosine of a difference. So you got Sine of x, cosine of y, minus sine of y, cosine of x. And that's our formula. And we're seeing that as a, an identity. But it's, it's called a difference identity. The difference, sine of a difference. And then same way here, when we have a difference in two angles, x minus y, it's different some, in some two angles. And we want to take the cosine value of that difference between the two angles. We have a, a formula here as well. It's cosine of x times the cosine of y. But it was a difference when we took cosine here of a difference. And when we came out in a formula, the formula is actually going in the opposite way where it now turned into a plus. Right? Plus sine of x times the sine of y. 
this formula over here, these two I wrote on this board here are referred to as the difference identities. So this first identity I mentioned here, this first sub entity, it was sign of a sub, right? So in a way I'm saying that. So normally we call that this is the formula where it says sign of a sub. And this is the, this part right here on the right side of our identity you know, is, is being treated as a formula for us to do the calculation. And then similarly here we're looking at the sign on the left hand side we've got a sum of two angles. Here, cosine of that. So now I'm seeing that here. I see that this second identity here we call it sine, cosine of a sum, right, of sum, sum of two angles. But now something to be mindful about this cosine of the sum is that when you're working through the formula, right, there's a subtraction. Okay. Right. That's why I wrote it in Reddit. So the same way over here. Similarly, I can call this, this is sine of a difference, difference in two angles, and then here we can call that this is cosine of a difference, difference in two angles. And as I stated earlier, we, at some point after we've done a few examples, so I'm going to reorganize all of these, uh, just keeping it a little easier for you guys to, uh, to remember these. Because right now, uh, in my teaching style, see, I, I'd rather not show you the proof, because the proof is delivered, and, and I would have to do the same anyway. So it's basically just making you guys to read through, I mean, making you guys uh, see through the way how I do that from the book. So that's, you can you know, read that information right from the book. Okay? We'd rather just pay more attention to how useful the, these identities are for us. Okay, so for this example one, let me uh, show you how useful the sine of a sub or cosine of a sub, those are sub or difference entities that uh, be useful for us here. Let's evaluate. So let's call it part A. Right now it's sine of 75 degrees. Sine of 75 degrees. And whatever I'm showing up here is just only my my way of thinking it. The, after you view the, the lecture here, after you been with spending time with me in the lecture here, I highly recommend you go home and, and review the problem here, but come up with your own creativity way to I mean a creative way to handle the problem as well. But the idea should be similar. Here's how I'm seeing it. We learned about sine of a sub and cosine of a sub and all that, right? Our goal is right now sine of a 75. So how about one problem? But let me suggest, I mean, well, let me show you one solution. Solution one. And these solution one, solution two, I'm going to purposely show you guys a couple of solutions, how you can handle one same problem like that. And then you can come up with other solutions. And so solution one or solution two are not necessarily linked together. Okay? They're just different ways of how we can handle the same problem. See what I'm saying? Huh? They're not sequential or order or whatsoever. But solution number one here, you know, the first thing, Angle 75 degrees, you get. Do you see the angle among the common angles on your unit circle? No. You don't. 75 is it's not on the unit circle. So the first solution number one is we think of 75, the angles here, written in degree degrees as a sum of uh, about 30 degrees and 45. You guys see that? If we see that as a sum, that's the useful as a the, uh, the sign of the sum angle for the formula. Yeah. So now seeing 75, right? Being the sum of 30 degrees and 45, now these are all common among your unit circle. You guys follow it? It's more like the planning and, and the good strategy to handle the problem. Okay. So, so now all of a sudden I realize, hey, sine of 75 degrees is the same right, as sine of 30, the sum of 30 and 45. So now we've got two separate angles begin Add it as a sum, right? So here we are, so we are working it with, hey, we are taking sine value of a sum. And now that sum, that sine of a sum formula, right, or that sine of a sum identity is going to become useful. So go ahead and read right through your formula right there and tell me what we can do here. In this situation, we can go, see, sine of the first angle, right? Sine of the first angle, sine of 30 degrees. Do I mean? 
And then the final or the editing say that we need to multiply that with cosine of the other angle, right? Of the next one again. Cosine of 45 degrees. And these are all easily found within your unit circle. Make sure you multiply them, right? The sine of the first angle times the cosine. Let's go. Sine cosine right? of the second angle. And then we're gonna, it was a sum here, we're gonna add. Right? And now we're gonna go again sine. But then now we switch to the order of the second angle, 45 degrees. Right? And then we multiply with cosine right? of the, the first angle, which is 30 degrees. Yeah. Right? So two separate products, sine, cosine, sine, cosine. And then we add those two products together. Right? So now each one of those are all within our capability to reach. Right? So we're going we're gonna to all easily find it. We can all easily find the answer here. So sine of 30 people. One half, very good. So that's one half, right? So sine of 30 degrees. What about cosine of 45 degrees? So two over two, right? So these two will multiply. We're going to add according to the formula. So now, and we've learned all these skills right there all over. Right? We've learned how to evaluate basic uh, trick expressions like, like this uh, in our earlier learning. Okay? So now sine of 45 degrees. Okay? It's another so two over two. Right? And then cosine of the 30 degrees. Well, three over two, right? Now we have all of those, right? Now it's just a matter of uh, putting it together in one term. Now, as far as the, the answer, this is already the answer, right? But it's better that we can simplify that a little bit. So, multiplying the two fractions, making it the two fractions here, making it two over two over four, right? Plus, and now the two fractions here multiplied together, we got the square root of six, right? Over four, again. Yeah. And then we can now have, we're now having a common denominator, so I'm going to put that in one fraction. So now it's square root of 2 plus the square root of 6. Okay. okay, and that's our final answer for that. Square root of 6. Right. So we found it. And that's how we have done it using one of the many different solutions out there. I call it solution 1. It doesn't necessarily have to be. So you know, this first thing or whatever, so it's just one solution I can think of. Right. So we're not moving away from this problem yet. Let's come up with a, a different solution. Okay. And like I said, you guys can also make your own creative thinking, together, right? your own way of doing creative thinking. So I want to roll back to this beginning point. Fraction right there. 75 angles, that can, the 75 degrees can be thought of as a difference between 135 and 60. Okay, so we've got that too. Okay, we've got a difference here, the same angle, we can see that as a difference. So, can you find these angles uh, as the amount of common angles in your unit circle? Well, 60 is easy, right? What about 135? Well, what radian is that? That is 3 pi over, three pi over 4. Right? But now, in the end, my point is that now we, so we have recognized these are the common angles. See, this, these kind of solution here, the, the, the point is, I'm trying to show you guys a way how people long before calculators were born, that, right? Handle the problem, because before your technology that you were using here, people would rely on doing that circle most of the time. So they're just gonna have to come up with all the tools they can, right? Before the calculation, before the calculator technology, so that they can do the calculation. See what I mean? So everything we try and make our way back to something that we can recognize it from the unit circle. Okay. And so, so now I'm recognizing 75 here as a difference between some two known angles, right? Same problem again, sine of 75. That's the ultimate goal here. Now we can we can express that as sine of a difference. I brought up this solution so that I can also show you how useful that the sign of the difference formula can be useful for us. So I still have that formula on my other board right there. So let's have a look at that one more time. See? Sign of a difference. 135 is here, right? And then 60 is here, so 175 minus 60. So we've got sign of the first angle times cosine of the second angle. The same, so pretty much the same with the with the uh, sum formula. It's, it's a product of sine of the first angle and cosine of the second angle. And in the next product, it's sine of the second angle and cosine of the first angle. Right? It's sine, cosine, sine, cosine. 
but the two angles switch order. And then when it's a difference here, we do a subtraction. You know what I'm saying? No? Okay. And so you can see that as I go, as I go along with the example, I can point out, you know, easier way to remember your your pointer. Okay. Now we're talking about sine of the plus angle of 135, right? Taking products with cosine of 60. Okay. And then we subtract. We're subtracting again sine and cosine, sine and cosine, right? Now this time we switch the roles of the two angles, sine of 60 and cosine of 135. And so in that way, how I'm seeing it, right? Now you, you can read any of these right out of your unit circle, right? Sine of 135. On the root 2 root 3. Okay. And then cosine of 60. Okay. And then we're subtracting according to the formula, right? According to the expression that we're at right now. And then sine of 60 degrees. Right? And here I can jump in with you guys here. So 60 degrees is gives me a square root 3, root 2, right? positive. But then cosine of 135, this is where we're getting minus root 2 over 2. Okay. 135 is the same as the 3 pi over 4 angle, and the cosine value goes negative on that end. Okay. Okay. And so now, these two fractions multiply together, we're looking at square root of 2 over 4, but here we're subtracting, and then this, the product between a positive, positive number and a negative number gives me a negative number, but together with that negative sign, but it comes back to adding, you know what I'm saying, huh? and you're looking at square root of 6 over 4, which is all of a sudden we realize, hey, it runs exactly into the same answer we've had before, which is how it's supposed to be, because we're still calculating the exact same problem, right? It's just different route to get that, different solution to get that. But here the same problem, I can see that as a difference of two other known angles. See what I mean? Right? So that's how we're doing the, the problem. Okay. Part three, let's say, and then be ready that this, any of these can be in gradients. Right now, I'm within the first two problems in example one right here, I'm going with the with the degrees we have to be aware that we can go with the radians at any time. Right? But now what I'm seeing here is that one solution has just one solution. Right? Solution number one right here. I can see, I can see 105 here as a sum. Okay. You can always express that any, any angle as a sum of some two other angles. So how about uh, 45 and 60? And these are all common angles, right? From the unit circle. When I say these are, I have these angles, the 45 and 60. Okay. So now that way we are ready. So cosine of 105, now all of a sudden we found a way to handle it. This cosine of 105 is the same as cosine of that sum, 45 plus 60. Okay, so now we're looking at cosine of a, of a sum. I erased that formula for cosine of a sum identity on the board. You guys had it written down not too long ago. Okay? So, Formula say take cosine of the first angle and also in products with the cosine of the next angle. So when you do a cosine of a sum or cosine of the difference, you go cosine, cosine, right, of the two separate angles. Okay. One, I mean, of the 60 here. But then if it was cosine of a sum, the formula will switch to minus, right, minus, and then the product of two sine here, sine of 45 and five sine of. 60. That's how we handle it. So for cosine, for me in my years of learning of, of doing this, I, I see the cosine of a sum or a cosine of differences a little easier for me because it, it goes it's cosine, cosine, sine, and sine, right? And when I say cosine, cosine, I meant two separate cosines from the two separate angles. You have even more of a product. That way you can go ahead and recognize right through your unit circle and keep things in root expression and exact expression. Okay. Right, so now moving into the next step.
step right here, cosine of 45 in our expression here, right, gives me a square root of 2 of 2. See if we can agree with it. Here. And then sine, I mean cosine of 60 degrees is a positive 1 half, right, square root of 2 over 2 times 1 half in the product. That's the product. But now make sure we're subtracting, right? So here, what do we subtract? Sine of 45 degrees, which is sine of a pi before it. Yeah. So that's a positive square root of 2 over 2. Then sine of the 60 degrees angle, which is square root of 3 over 2. Right? So now we're back down to we're down to square root of 2 over 4 minus the square root of 6 over 4. Right? We're looking at the, putting it all together in one fraction. Right? Here, square root of 2 minus the square root of 6 right? over 4. That's how we're doing it. Right? And that, that's one solution. The solution here focus on the fact that we can turn that angle 105, right, of our goal right here into a sum, some sort of known angle, and uh, known MS, known from the unit circle, we know that common angle, right? And then let me introduce another solution to you. So, the 105 angle, I can also see that as a 135, right, and take away 30, where you have difference, and that's just my thinking right now. Uh, you can also explore some other different ways to get the point is the same angle 105. Uh, we start out without I mean without a, a known cosine value, but we can purposely see 105 as as a difference so that we can apply cosine of a difference. So cosine of 105 the same as cosine of that difference 135 minus 30. Cosine, cosine, product, two cosine, two cosines of what? Cosine of the first angle and cosine of the other angle, the same angle. You know what I mean? That's, I want you guys to see that. Yeah. And then we're going to, listen, the, the, the formula we're about to use here is cosine of, of a difference. So in the formula, when it was a difference, when we're taking cosine of, of, of the difference, it turns into adding of these two products, right? So that is sine. Of 135 times sine of 30. And you guys can do the calculation. Cosine of 135 is a negative square root of 2 over 2. Right? Cosine of 30 is a square root of 3 over 2. And now we subtract, I mean, we're adding, right? Sine of 135 is a positive square root of 2 over 2. Sine of the 30 degrees angle, right, one half. And so putting it all together, we look at minus square root of 6 over 4 plus square root of 2 over 4. And then that's together, we'd be putting one fraction all over 4 minus square root of 6 plus square root of 2. Is there any difference between this answer and the earlier one? There isn't, right? It's just the same because. The earlier one we found uh, square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. So it's just, it's already the same denominator. Right? It's just that the numerator here got written backward, that's all. It's essentially more exactly the same. Right. And so let me just bring out a, another problem in example 1 right here. So that you guys can get a little experience with uh, the radiant unit. So when we're at this level over here, we're not specifically entitled for, hey, you only use radians all the time, or hey, you only use degrees all the time. Right? You've got to be flexible, be able to work flexibly between the two conventions okay, when, when you're looking at angles. So how about question C right here? Right? And I'll just, for this one right here, I'll just show one solution for that, and you guys can think of some other one. So how about cosine of a five, five, well, the angle this time is completely in radians, right? So here's how here's how I'm doing it. So I can see the kind of scratch work in the odd process, right? Five pi over twelve and the odd. But that's just my way of seeing it. And you can think of other creative there's a sum as well. But uh, five pi over twelve, I'm seeing that as a pi over six, right? Plus a pi over four. Let's see if you guys believe that. Pi over 6 is, after making a common denominator, it turns into a 2 pi over 12, right? And then the pi over 4, after, after making a common denominator, it's going to be a 3 pi over 12, right? And 
So 2 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12 gives us a 3 pi pi over 12, right? Right? That's how we get it. So now that means what? As a solution here, I'm using a sum again, even though you could also think of that as a different sum of some two other angles. So the cosine of pi pi over 12 here, now I can see that as cosine of a pi over 6 plus a pi over 4. Right? So now I'm looking at, I'm about to use uh, the cosine of a sum. And the formula is on the board there yeah, again. I erased it. Cosine of the first angle, pi over 6, multiply with cosine of pi over 4. We're subtracting. So remember, cosine of a sum, now finally we've got to have a subtraction. We're subtracting now sine of pi over 6, multiplying that with sine of pi over 4. And these are all kind of angles that you can usually find. They're assigned cosine values around your unit circle. Yeah. Five six is one half, right? Cosine of a five of four is with two of two. Minus and sine of five or six for here. So I think oh, it's now here, right? Cosine of five or six is just what three over two. Right? And sine of a five or six is with one half, right here, so we're subtracting that, and sine of a five or four is another square root two over two. Keep these values. We're going to see this so that we can isolate out of the operation. Right, so we've got my square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. Right. There you go. And then you can put that in a final fraction right here. Common denominator 4 square root of 6 minus square root of 2. Right. That's how we calculate cosine of a pi over 12. Okay. All right, so let's reorganize our learning a little bit right here. So we've done example one, and we've, we've done one example with quite a few problems in there. Right? So let me point out this thing for you guys, and I, I hope it helps your uh, it helps you your mind to remember these uh, identities a little easier over here. But see, we got sine of a sum, right? And that went. Sine, yeah, the way how it says sine of a sum here, so sine of some two angles x plus y, right? What it equals? It equals sine of x times cosine see, of y, and then sine of the second angle of y times cosine of x, right? And then we're adding. So adding here goes with adding, and it goes sine and cosine. In the same way right here, with sine of a difference. Sign of difference. We got, see, I purposely wrote them line, kind of line up with each other right here, as, even though it's two separate formulas. Sign of a difference. So the only thing is difference, but it's sign and sign, right? Let's try to recognize the similarity right here from our formula that we already learned, right? It's sign of the first angle, cosine of the second angle. You see how the same it is right there? With the sign of a sub formula. And then it also has, but now it, it switched to, it goes minus sign of the second angle times cosine of plus angle. So every setup is exactly the same, right? Between sine of a sum and sine of a difference. When it gets into the formula, it's almost like every setup is the same right here. What what common do we have? What common things do we have right here? Sine of a first angle, sine of first angle in product with cosine of the second angle, right? And then sine of the second angle in product with cosine of the first angle. See what I'm saying, yeah? Right. And so the only difference here is that there's sign of a sum or there's sign of a product. Or, I mean sign of a difference. And so usually many textbooks, they write their formula like this. And this is why we call that sum, right? Or different. You see the title of our discussion topic here is sum or difference. Identity. So see, we go sum, sign of a sum, or a difference. Yeah, plus and minus, right? Yeah? Sign of a sum or sign of a difference can be can be written as a little smaller sign of a sum or a sign of a difference between two angles. Right? Yeah. And yes, the common thing is they have sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, and then sine of the second angle, cosine of the first angle. That common 
apart because we put them together. You know what I mean? And then if it's sine of a sum, then it comes out with the sum of these two products together. And then if it's sine of a different type, then it comes out to be different between. And this is more like a one condensed identity with the, the sum or difference identity for the sine function. That's the sort of like the revised version of that. Now let's look at the the cosine that you guys wrote down with the cosine of a sum or a cosine of a difference. Okay. Cosine of a sum, it went cosine right, of x plus y, cosine of a difference, cosine of x minus y. What we learned when it was cosine of a sum, we go cosine of x, cosine of y, right? Product of two cosines. Okay. And then sine of x, sine of y. Right. Then we switch from the plus sign here in the formula, we've got subtraction between the two products there. Okay. And then cosine of, of a difference. What we did here, what we learned here, it's cosine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle. So you see that common thing about between the two formulas? Cosine, cosine, right? cosine, 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 cosine. Then we go, we switch to sine of the first angle, and multiply with sine of the second angle. But now, if it's a cosine of a difference, the formula here is going to utilize the plus and free. So now when you write that in a formal formula, you want formal sum or difference. Hey, we can have cosine. If it's a sum, then it's cosine of a sum, we go was cosine of x, cosine of y, right? sine of x, sine of y. The common structure are here, the cosine, cosine, right? and the sine, the sine. But then if it was a sum, then between those two, we're going to have a minus between. Right? And if it's a difference between the two angles, so cosine of an x minus y, so here I'm using plus or minus. Here I switch over to minus plus. You are saying no. Right. So you may see a lot of, you, you will actually see a lot of textbooks write one formula for the sum or difference at any cosine. Like that's like what you are seeing right here on the board in front of you. Know what I mean? Right. That's, uh, that's what we've learned about the sum or difference at any. And as far as the calculation examples, it happens that you need that example of uh, point it out before we got, we got to that uh, revised version. Right. At this point, really, example one is everything you, that you need for here. Anything else that I'm introducing here, they are more just like how we can apply the creativity in that. So I'm not even going to worry about naming or labeling these uh, examples. It's another way of how we can creatively apply the uh, part of the example, but I'm not going to label the number of that. Right, so we want to. Now the calculation becomes a little more uh, of, uh, tricky, right? And tricky, I, I don't mean it's hard, it just means we, we need to put in more creative thought into it, right? So that we can handle the problem. Believe me, everything I'm about to show you is all within what you have learned here. So, Right here, as required, we need we need to calculate cosine of x plus y, right? Cosine of a sum. So let's write it down. The formula we've had is just here. So we apply from our understanding, right? Cosine of x times cosine of y. See, cosine, cosine, right? And then we need to subtract sine of x, sine of y. That's the way how. See, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, right? But then if it's a plus. Those subtract between the two. And so cosine of x is given as a value here, 0.736. Cosine of y is 0.349. Right? So we got the, but we didn't know sine of x and sine of y. See what I mean? So this is one thing that you guys already learned. Don't we always know that sine squared of x plus cosine squared? Let's look at the x angle, right? We always have this famous identity x squared sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. 
cosine squared of x is the same as that point in the 736, all squared. Okay. So sine squared of x plus point 736, all squared, must be equal to 1. And so that means what? Sine squared of x will equal 1 minus point 736 squared. This is where your calculation can come out easily. Okay. So sine of x will technically be two answers, plus and minus square root. Uh, whatever, whichever comes out from coming out from 1 minus 0 0.736 squared. So go ahead and get me a value for that square root, please. 0 0.264, something like that, okay? But see, are we taking the positive one on the negative one? Positive, positive. why? That's the first one. Yeah. Yeah, no? Okay. So we got to use it. So now that each sign of x is a point. 264 chosen, right? That's total required here, right? So now we're going to take that value and put that in here. See what I mean? Right? So that means this work here becomes a 0.736 multiplied with 0.249, right? We're subtracting. So now sign of x, we have a value available now at this point. 0.264, right? And what about sine of y? We can do the same thing. Now let's switch to y. It doesn't matter what angle that is. All the way through. Right? Cosine squared of y. I mean, cosine of y is a 0.349. Yes, we're looking at 0.349 all squared. Okay. So now we're going to take sine of y plus 0.349 all squared equals 1. So sine of y, sine squared of y is 1 minus 0.349 squared. Uh, solve for sine of y, which is plus minus square root, 1 minus point three four nine again. Right? Please help me out. Point eight zero seven. Okay. I'm going to have to adjust this. Point eight zero seven. Wait, so point oh four three eight. Three eight one six. Yeah. Okay. So that's four decimal. And watch for our rounding requirements anyway to do your assignments. All right. All right. So for this problem, if you allow me to show show you how I break it down here. Now the first thing is that we can we notice in our example right here, in our problem, in our expression right here, this is some angle, right? You can call it some angle x, some angle y right here. So I'm saying, no? and it looks like it repeat in the two angles here repeat again among the signs, right? As x. That's why. That's just something to isolate your attention with that, to that, right? And then so, and then another observation here is that it looks like we got a product of two cosine that come together, and then after that it's an addition, and then there's two a, a product of two sine function. And so now in the way I'm seeing, in the problem we have here, which one among the two is the, the more suitable one? Which one between the two identities here has that setup like similar to the one we're having on our problem? Okay. So the one we have is cosine of x, cosine of y plus, right? Sine of x and sine of y. So that's here from what we've learned, and that's that is the same as cosine of x minus y here. See what I mean? So the idea now is in this problem we learn to use the same identity, but in the, in the opposite way right here for a different usefulness. So now I can see this as if I regard seven three pi over seven as some angle x, right? So we got cosine of x times cosine of y here. That's 2 pi over 21 is y, right? Plus sine between them, and then there's sine of 3, sine of uh, x, uh, and sine of y right here. See, and so now we can recognize that it will immediately go to cosine, right, of a difference, x minus y, okay, in that order, according to the, the, the energy we are applying. And so now in that way, after this scratch work, we see after this thought process, we, we can formally write it like this. So cosine of the 3 pi over 7, right? Times cosine of the 2 pi over 21, like that. Plus sine of the 3 pi over 7 times sine of the 2 pi over 21. That is the same as cosine of so the plus angle here is. Like, like that, x minus y, right? so 3 pi over 7, subtract 2 pi 
over 21. Right, we got that still. Now, in the next step, it's just a matter of combining the subtraction with here, combining these two fractions if you want. Right? So, scratch work we get 3 pi over 7 minus 2 pi over 21. We can make a common denominator by multiplying 3 to both sides. I mean, to top and bottom of the first fraction, if you're making it 9 pi over 21, right? Minus 2 pi over 21. So, in that way, our combined angle here is a 9 minus 2 and 7 pi over 21, and that will reduce down to a pi over 3. Are you guys with me on that? So that's the algebra of the, of the, the difference here. So that means, uh, let me erase this and write that in a, maybe that in a clean form. Now, in my next step right here, what I'm seeing is it's the same as cosine of pi over 3. Now, cosine of pi over 3 is extremely easy for us to calculate, right? And, and when exact expression is preferred right here today for a problem like this, since the angle is right on the unit circle, right? It's right among the, the common angle in the unit circle right there. We can easily get the exact the final answer in the exact expression. Okay. Right. So go ahead and get that uh, calculated for me. Right. One, okay. right. So that's another example right here. And like I said, this is among those examples where, where I didn't number the examples because it's just like so many different applications of, of the identity here. And they're not necessarily linked to each other. Right. Let's keep exploring the, the usefulness of the sub difference identities. From the beginning from last time, and let's call it here example number two. That's the reason why I call it example number two. It's open up and it's last problem here class. So let's prove uh, That plus, plus NMVD for sure. So, I have explained long ago when we start getting introduced to the, sorry, getting introduced to identity, right? Identity here means it's an equality that's supposedly true for all values of the variables here. So the variables we're looking at now is x and y and x and y, right? So let's say, we want to prove that this equality here will be true for all angles x and y that we substitute it into that. And then we want to prove that. So proving it's one of the technique I already showed you, and now we can bring it out and use it again. The technique is we start with one side, right? And more preferably the side that has more things involved. So in this equation here, clearly in this uh, equality here, clearly the right hand side is slightly more stuff involved, right? Let's start out with that side again. And we're gonna going to use our formulas, we can use whatever understanding we have up to this point so that we can see, we can make the bridge and make that the equal to the, the other side, left hand side again. Right. And so, so now to start with the proof, I want to show how this right hand side, which is looking so complicated, can equal to this, simply sine of x times cosine of y. Right. So, starting out with the right hand side, we're looking at one half. Right? In parentheses or in square brackets, sine of x plus y plus sine of x minus y. What can that equal to? The first thing, and the reason now we didn't learn about this identity until now because we just finished learning about the sine of a sum and sine of a difference again. The sum of difference and any. So, what can you guys say about this particular one that I have put in that right there in, in parentheses? In the, under the, with the red underline of that. We have a sign of a sum formula, right? Or a sign of a sum identity again. Yeah. So that means uh, in my next step, I can still keep the one half here. Yeah. And then the sign of a sum here, what have we learned? It's sine of x, right? Times the cosine of y plus sine of y times the cosine of x. You agree? So all of that work right here is just the expanded form of that to substitute for that uh, sign of a sum that I underline with the red ink. And so the same way right here we can do with this. That we also we can we can also apply the, the sign of the difference right here for that. Right? And the formula is still there on the board for example that. So and right here we still got that uh, plus sign. So let's put it in plus. Right? Now, sign of a difference. We've got 
sine of x3 times a cosine of y, and we subtract it, sine of y times cosine of x. And let's close that big bracket. Okay. Are we good with that? So each one of these simply came out because I utilized the, the sign of the sum identity, and I also used use sign of a different identity for to get to this likely expression. It looks lengthy, but it's now gonna you gotta see how I'm gonna clean it up because it's, it's gonna be surprisingly simple for us to do. Do you notice opposite sign right here? The, the exact same term but opposite sign, right? Or in other words, they are opposite terms again. What happened to them? These are exact right terms, right? The sine of x times cosine of x, cosine of y, sine of x times cosine of y, exact right terms. So adding them together, we have it in parentheses or in the brackets, two times, right? Two times the sine of x times uh, cosine of y. You see how it, how it gets also so shortened down with that? And we still have that what half was y in front. Now, what's going to happen after we multiply the one half into that two? Let's cancel out quickly, right? And then leaving that to sine of x times cosine of y. So wait a minute, what have we found? We have made our way, starting with the right hand side, which looked quite complicated, and we made our way and we used it now to do something that led exactly into the left hand side. So now we have proven this. I think you can see what I mean. That was one of them. That's called a part A, the example. What we have proven here just now is we go from a product, right? A product, looking at that identity from the left to the right, we're starting out on the left hand side with a product of sine and cosine on two different angles. See? Sine of x, cosine of y, like that. Then that equals a, a one half. So it's a product, and we turn that into a, we turn that to a sum right here. The sum of sine of uh, x plus y, and then in the sum with sine of x minus y. You guys with me right there? So, product and ending out with sum. Product that start ending out with a sum right here. Not be because of the sum and difference. That big sum right there. And so, a formula like this, an identity like this, people refer to that as a product. Product your sum. See what I mean? But that's just a one of the one of the product to sum identity. That's one of them. Product <clears throat> sine of x times sine of y. So very similar. I can do so. It's another identity that we're proving. It's a different one, right? But the way how we handle it is just the same way. We're starting out with the side that looks more, or maybe just slightly more complicated, but it's got more things involved. Now. So the right hand side in this case, right, one half times with all that uh, cosine of the x minus y minus cosine of uh, x plus y. So this right hand side right here, I can see that further, one further step right here. We, it's involving cosine of this difference and cosine of a sum, right? So we can utilize directly the, the the sub more difference identities we've learned. So this cosine of the difference right here, I can rewrite as I can re-express that as see what's easy to remember about cosine of this one, cosine, uh, cosine of the difference or cosine of a sum that it's always cosine cosine. Right? Cosine of x times cosine of y. But then it was a subtraction here, so we're gonna have to write that as a plus. A plus then we've got sine of x times uh, sine of y. That's zero. And then we're going to subtract. Now it comes uh, cosine of a sum right here that I'm about to underline. So cosine of a sum itself is going to turn into, I'm going to produce another set of parentheses here. But cosine of a sum, x plus y, so we've got cosine of x. Cosine of y right? minus <coughs> sine of x and times sine of y. And then the 
negative sign, we will account it and switch sign the user code together. So we might do one more step between you, maybe I'm looking at one half times if you are having cosine of x, cosine of y, plus sine of x, sine of y, and then subtracting cosine of x times cosine of y. We're adding sine of x, sine of y. Right. And then we have opposite terms right here. If you use two terms or a right term, we can combine them. Right. We get one half, two times uh, sine of x, sine of y. Exactly on the left hand side of them. So we have proven another identity. Okay. So this identity we have just now proven is another product to some identity. So we're looking at sine of x times uh, sine of y. That equals one half, right? Times uh, cosine of x minus y minus cosine of x plus y. So now, this is not only just one identity, we got a few, right? A few product to some identities, plural. And we have this last one right here. <coughs> so we don't need to put that in the example anymore. You guys already seen a way where to go with that. Right, so that's the last, the last one among the, the product to sum identity.